Labradoodle Generations. If you are in the market for Labradoodles, then chances are you have come across some strange combinations of letters and numbers, like F1B and the like. As easy as it might seem to disregard these codes, we would very strongly recommend against that, since these actually contain super useful information in deciding what kind of Labradoodle may be best for you. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Cracking the code. Figuring out the specifics on the doodle you have got your eyes on is easier than ever once you figure out what the letters and numbers mean. For example, the F present throughout the generations stands for filial hybrid, which simply indicates that your dog is a cross and not a purebred. A common example of the code that trips people up quite often is the F1B generation, but it is a lot easier than it looks. The one here stands for the generation, in this case, we would have a first-generation Labradoodle. Finally is the B, which represents a back cross, or when you inbreed back to a purebred dog. This is pretty common among all kinds of doodles, because back crossing with a purebred poodle can help guarantee the hypoallergenic traits are passed on. F1 Labradoodle An F1 Labradoodle is a 50-50 split between a purebred lab and a standard poodle. This version of the Labradoodle is the poster child for what people picture when they hear the name too, and so in many ways this may be the best option for you if you aren't quite as picky about the non-shedding aspect of things. The F1 also boasts a distinct advantage called hybrid vigor, which essentially means that the first hybrid cross, as it is officially referred to, will be healthier than the purebred parents, and will not have to deal with hereditary deformities or issues that can affect purebred dogs. The only drawback to the F1 is that, because it is just a 50-50 split, it can be hard to know exactly what the Labradoodle will look like, what kind of coat it will have, and if it has any hypoallergenic qualities. F1B Labradoodle Next up is the F1B Labradoodle, which has about 25% lab genetics and 75% poodle genetics, making it much more likely to be hypoallergenic. You get an F1B Labradoodle by crossing any F1 Labradoodle back with one of the purebred parent types, but again, it is almost always the poodle that gets the back cross. The F1B Labradoodle is often called a hypoallergenic Labrador Retriever because it receives so many of the poodle's traits, making this a great dog for pet owners that have to do with allergies. The only real downside here is that you will have to spend probably more time than you would like grooming your furry companion, since they will most likely be non-shedding. This could also mean a bit more money goes to professional grooming, which is recommended for most Labradoodle types anyway, but is important to know. F1BB Labradoodle the F1BB Labradoodle is one that has gone through two back crosses and is roughly 87.5% Poodle to only 12.5% Labrador. This second back cross is usually only done by breeders who want more of a guarantee that the dogs will be non-shedding and hypoallergenic, and it makes the F1BB the most hypoallergenic option for those interested. Just like we talked about with the F1B though, is that grooming and maintenance will be the name of the game here, and it is also worth noting that since the F1BB is technically the third generation for the Labradoodle here, there will be less hybrid vigor left over, and health issues could be a bit more noticeable here. F2 Labradoodle Next up, we have the F2 generation, which we get by crossing two F1 Labradoodles together. What we get from this is another 50-50 split Labradoodle, but this time there are a ton more variables. Because of this, and the fact that the F1 Labradoodle does essentially the same thing but with less risk and guesswork, makes the F2 a Labradoodle that most breeders won't even bother selling. While the F2 may not be a dog that you will see out and about, they are very important to building up the F2 generation, which has its own set of advantages. F2B Labradoodle The F2B Labradoodle is a cross between an F1 and an F1B Labradoodle, creating a dog that is about 62.5% Poodle and only 37.5% Labrador. This is technically a third generation dog as well, and has more Poodle in it than the F2 base. 
This Labradoodle has more hypoallergenic traits, but not enough to consistently appear, giving some wiggle room to what kind of dog you could get here. F2BB Labradoodle Next up, we have the F2BB Labradoodle, which is the most hypoallergenic and non-shedding of the second generation. This iteration is 81.5% Poodle and 12.5% Lab, which is a crazy ration in comparison to many of the other options on this list. Because of the fur, the F2BB will most likely have to be groomed every day, but on the bright side, it is also incredibly unlikely that your dog will shed at all, so you won't have to deal with the cleanup. This is technically the fourth generation of the Labradoodle by now, but most breeders usually just call them multi-generational at this point, so don't be confused if you read that instead. F3 Labradoodle Before we get into the last entry, give yourself a little pat on the back for making it all the way to F3. That's no easy task, considering how much detail there is to the naming process. The last entry we are going to cover is called the F3, but it is also just called the multi-generation by many. F3 refers to any dog that is on its third generation or more, and contains a lot of poodle traits within them. On the flip side, they also include the least amount of hybrid vigor and are susceptible to health issues that some of the earlier generations will most likely avoid. This is a great pick for people with allergies, and the small changes amongst F3 Labradoodles will just be quirks that make them unique, which is also exciting. And that's all for our video today. I hope we were able to teach you a bit more about Labradoodles, and that if you are on the search for one right now, you added another tool to your belt. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one posted all the time.